Good morning. So yesterday was my birthday and I've never really cared about my birthdays, but it's always been a great opportunity to just not be bothered by anything or anyone for a day. So that's always great. Grim. Grim is, Scrim is joining us today. No madam, big creature. Anyway, since it's been about two weeks since I've made a video and I really need to put something out, I decided to treat myself to a little birthday present and make another ring. Stay tuned. Okay, so there's a river close to where I live and I was walking the shores the other day when I found these little shards of clam shells. And lately I've been big into abalone, so I knew, of course, I have to make something with these. So I started making these little, I don't know what you call them, just little, little trinkets, little tablets. I don't know. The word is escaping me right now. Anyway, now they're both great, but I really love the look of the white one, plus it's a lot more sturdy, so I'll use that one for this project. And since I've done many complicated wearable architecture type rings lately, I figured I'd settle down a bit and do a mostly simple band with a bit of clamshell at the center. So I guess let's get started. Okay, so by this point, we all know the drill. I'm just gonna start with a nice thick piece of wax ring tube, grind it to shape, and start the long process of carving out the inside so I can fit it onto one of the giant comical bratwursts I call my fingers. And with that finished, well, we're gonna need our design. I put this in here mostly because I spent some time getting these shots and didn't want to waste them. Yes, designing is a pretty big part of the process, but I didn't use any of the elements I drew here, so really this part of the video doesn't really matter. And neither does this, I just film myself doing a bunch of different hand gestures to go with however I ended up explaining it, so... You know, let's just, let's just move on. Okay, abalone. I cut off a chunk of the rectangle and got to sanding. I ended up with a beautiful little cabochon and I am just amazed with how well it turned out. But don't, don't think about that now. Never think about anything good while working with metal. Metal is the enemy. If you get your hopes up, it's gonna kick you in the ribs and keep kicking you until you learn to stop counting your chickens before they're cooked. I, uh, I, I, sorry, sorry about that. Just, uh, um, anyway. Now we can move on to carving our ring. The setting is always gonna be the hardest part to carve, so if you can get past that, you're basically out of the water. From there, it's really not much left to be done. I decided to go with something simple and classic, a plain band with a little rim on either side. With that finished, we'll get this piece ready for the plaster. I always dread this part of the process, not because it's difficult or anything, but because it requires two things that I have always absolutely despised. Precise measurements and my constant undivided attention. Or to put it more simply, it's a giant hassle and I'm lazy. Very, very lazy. Which is why I didn't film most of this. I mean, really, it's just like a vacuum machine and pouring plaster into things. Not that interesting. If you want to go see it, I mean, it's in my other video. Just go, go check that out. But when the plaster's set up, we can stick it in the fire. And fire is always interesting. And this is a good one. Lots of nice hot coals. Good for melting out the mold. And with the mold in the stove, I'll take this sad, sad remnant of my silver and get it cooking in the furnace. And after a few gratuitous fire shots, it's finally time to pour. Unfortunately, this is one of the cleanest pours I've ever done. And after a quick bath to cool down, it looks like the ring itself turned out pretty well too. Okay, now with everything difficult out of the way, it's time for cleaning. I started by cutting off the metal bar, cutting off the sprue metal, and sanding it back down to a uniform shape. The metal ended up being a lot more porous than I initially thought or hoped, but it's a defect that I can definitely live with. And if I don't like it, I can always grind it out later. We'll give it a quick polish to get our first look at it, and it's already looking just beautiful. Now we'll take out this last bit of silver and start grinding down the inside of the band. I'd polish the inside, but I ruined all my general polishing bits, and there's no way I'm leaving the house today. After that, I'll use my hand files to cut the grooves back into where they got ground off, give it a polish, and there's only one thing left to do. Please remember that I'm no jeweler in any capacity. I'm sure that if any real jewelers ever saw these videos, they'd burn me at the stake for my many, many heresies against the craft, but... I just set my cabochons by bending the bezel over the stone, and while that is the way to do it, I'm kind of overdoing it. Or maybe just plain doing it wrong. But that abalone is never coming out, so in my book, another success to add to the pile. And with that finished, I'll just give it a final polish, and that's just about everything. It's by no means a perfect ring, and it's got loads of inclusions and imperfections, but I'm quite happy with it overall. It's one of the simplest rings I've made in a long, long time, and I couldn't have spent my birthday better. 
It's been just a lovely, slow-paced weekend, and I'm so glad that I got to spend it making something cool. Couldn't have asked for a better birthday present from my, myself. And that's gonna just about do it for today. I'm Mick the Modern Artisan. Like and subscribe if you wanna see more, and I will see you tomorrow morning. Have a good day. We need to do a portrait together, like a Bond villain. You'd be up for that, right? You'd be up for that. You would. Okay, we're gonna put you down. Please forgive me for the fan in the background. I completely forgot about it until this exact moment, and I am not re-recording any of this dialogue, so that that's it, I guess.